Hi, this is Carrie from Cookbook Divas, and today I'm exploring a Nordic cookbook that I got at my local library. It's called North, and it's by Gunnar Carl Gislason, Gislason, don't know how to say it, and Jody Eddy. It's a massive book. I can't picture myself buying this because it's going to take a lot of room on the shelf, but if I can get it from my local library and explore it now, I'm fascinated with Iceland personally. Anybody here also really intrigued. Uh, several of my friends have gone. I haven't been able to budget the time and money to go, but it's it's a priority. I want to do it in the next five years. I'm a little worried because I am a lifelong vegetarian and I don't eat fish. So what would I eat in Iceland? Don't know. <laughs> Whenever I get really meat and fish heavy cookbooks like this, I just kind of look through for things that I can personally just take away and edit out or do mushrooms and tofu instead of whatever the meat is. If that sounds horrific, well, sorry, feel free to eat all the meat and fish that you want. This is the first Icelandic cookbook I've looked through, although I've read some Icelandic blogs and read about it in magazine Bon Appetit and Epicurious always talk about it. Let's check out the contents and I'm going to mispronounce some of these terms because I've never heard of the regions or whatever. They're divided into chapters where they meet someone that's growing something or baking or curing meat or whatever. And then after they interview the person for a few pages and talk about them, then they go on to the recipes and pictures of the region the person lives in that are gorgeous. So besides just being a cookbook, if I actually read this through cover to cover, which I might, I'm going to learn a lot about Iceland. The first chapter is the Bacaleo producer, whatever. The second is the Arctic char smoker. The rug broad baker, I'm going to head straight there because I'm curious about baking. The fisherman, I'm going to flip by that quickly. The seabird egg collector, ooh, egg recipes. The barley farmer, the dairy farmer. Then they move on to the birch and mushroom forager. Now I live near some woods in Washington state, so I'm always curious about foraging, but I'm not going to forage for mushrooms until I've taken classes and gone with experts. Yeah. Next chapter is the sheep farmer, the hard fiskier producer, I'm sure I said that wrong, the salt maker, the goat farmer, and the final chapter is the blue mussel and dulce harvester, or dulce, I don't know, dulce. And at the very end, typical of cookbooks like this, ingredients for an Icelandic pantry. Maybe we should check that out first. That's 333. Let's check it out. Ingredients. I think that should be in the beginning of the book, but it's not up to me. Okay. Hmm, a recipe for red beet stones. Okay. Angelica, Arctic char, Arctic thyme. Well, I'm not going to be able to find that at my local Trader Joe's, but okay. Bacaleo is cod that's been salted and dried. Okay. Birch, native trees. Hmm, I might be able to get a hold of that. Blue mussels. Skipping it. Crowberries, dark tart crowberries, are one of the few berries that grow in Iceland. Hmm. Well, you can substitute blueberries. Okay, fine. Good. Dulce, or dulce, is a deep red seaweed. Well, I bet you can get that on dried on Amazon. Hard fiskure is a grain for making bread. It's made from a wolf fish. Uh, what? <laughs> okay, I'm not going to have that. Icelandic moss. Lavage, a tall growing plant. I've actually grown that before but never cooked with it. Lumpfish, I'm skipping that. Rapeseed oil for cooking. Rug broad, also known as geyser bread, the sweet rye bread, has been baked for centuries using geothermal heat. Well, I'm going to be using my oven <laughs> anyway. Uh, sorrel, and then I hope I'm saying this right, skier. Technically a cheese. It's compared to thick Greek yogurt. Is it skier? Skyer? I'm going to have to look up pronunciations before I do more videos on Iceland. And wait. Oh, that was the Icelandic pantry. Okay. So I saw some fascinating recipes as I flipped through. Uh, lots of pickled things, as you would expect. Veal stock, pickled fennel. Okay, moving on. Lump fish roe. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Uh, oh, there's a frightening creature that I want you to look at too, so I'm not lonely and scared looking at it. Oh, that was a tea poached snake. That's not typical of this cookbook. I'm just going to get out of the weird seafood session. Oh, let's check out the seabird egg collectors. Oh, see, not everything in this book is scary, but it's really fascinating. I'm not sure I'm going to necessarily cook many things out of here, but here's a recipe for cauliflower seabird eggs and burned butter. I, 
that's that's actually really interesting. This may be more of an educational cookbook for me than, you know, I don't want to show you too many of the pictures because that's not fair for copyright or legal. Just checking out, giving you an idea of what this book is like. Really interesting. There were some things here with scared, custard with blueberries and cinnamon sugar. I don't really need an Icelandic cookbook to learn how to make that, but it's nice that it's here. Fennel salad, cottage cheese, and spice nuts. That sounds good. It, it's very intriguing, and I have to say, with all the cookbooks that I look through, this is the only one I can picture myself actually sitting down and reading through like a book, although I'm skipping all the meat and fish chapters because... Yeah. And it would probably put me to sleep at night, so I'll probably do it on one of my Sundays when I just sit in an armchair while the laundry's going and I sit by the fire and have tea or wine and read a cookbook instead of just flip, flip, flip. Anyway, if you're intrigued, check it out. Thanks for watching.